Hello and welcome to another Let's Play on the Third Age Total War with the Fight and Conquer submod version 1.2. Many of you will probably know that I'm currently doing a Let's Play on the Realm of Imlarges, but I decided it was time for a second campaign. I've been wanting to do a second campaign for a while, but I wanted to make sure that my Realm of Imlarges campaign was at a point where I wouldn't easily abandon it, and I reached that point a while back, so I'm happy to start a second campaign now. I had some ideas for which faction to play. Oh, before we get into that, let me just quickly say the links to the mods are in the description. So if you want to play a mod yourself for Medieval 2, then uh, you can find the downloads on the pages in the description. Uh, so there's that out of the way. Anyway, I had some ideas about factions to play. Uh, I had thought about playing the Eastlings of Rune. I thought about playing the Haven of Umbar, Shadow of Mirkwood, Isengard, mostly evil factions. Um, but I ended up deciding on the Principality of Dol Amroth. The reason for this is because I really wanted to play the Eastlings of Rune. However, the Eastlings of Rune are going to have a huge overhaul in version 2.0 of the Divide and Conquer mod, which is going to be released in a couple of months or next year or something. So it's still a while away. And I figured if I was going to play them now, when they're completely different than what they'll be in a couple of months, then my campaign is going to feel kind of outdated and irrelevant after version 2.0 has released. So I figured I wanted to play as someone else. Um, I thought of some evil factions, but I, I ended up deciding that I wanted to do something different. I haven't really been down here at all yet. To be fair, a lot of the factions around here are getting some massive overalls at version 2.0, but that's mostly to do with evil stuff and doesn't really concern the Principality of um, uh, Dol Amroth all too much. It will do a little bit. Um, like certain areas are going to be, like certain towns are going to be different locations and pro provinces are going to be owned by different people, etc. But it shouldn't be too big a deal. Um, there shouldn't be too much of a difference for us anyway. Like there's nothing unit-wise that's going to be different for the Principality of Dol Amroth compared to version 2.0 that has anything to do with the East anyway. So anyway, uh, long story short, I, um, I decided to just play the Principality of Dol Amroth. There's a good chance I'll end up still playing the Shadow of Mirkwood or Isengard or, or any of the other factions at some point. Um, I definitely still want to do the Eastlings of Rune 1 version 2.0 comes out. But for now, Principality of Dol Amroth. So, we're going to do a long campaign. We need to hold 30 regions, including the Western Belfalas Haven lands of Umbar. So, that's right here. Uh, Haruzan. And we have to eliminate the factions Haradrim Tribes and the Haven of Umbar. So red and yellow, essentially. So we don't have to bother with Mordor. I think we do start a war with them. We at least start with war with Eastlings of Rune, which I'm pretty sure not supposed to... Like, that's just something they, that the mod, lead mod developer said he just kind of forgot to take out of the game. Um, but yeah, we're starting war with Rune for some reason. Um, feel free to read this if you are interested. I am not too bothered uh, with... I mean, I'm interested in reading this, but I'm not going to do it on screen because that would make for a very boring video. Our strengths, we have level 5 smithing, we have the best elite cavalry in Middle-earth, and we have a versatile, expensive, and strong roster. I'm not sure how expensive is a, a strength, but, you know, it's, it's a strong roster anyway. Our weaknesses are that we have very expensive units. There you go. Uh, we have regional training restri restrictions. About half of our units can only be recruited either in the starting provinces that we have, uh, as well as Ephelond. Um, or they can only be recruited along a coastal town or in a coastal town, things like that. There's, there's a lot of uh, restrictions, uh, uh, area of recruitment restrictions. And we have a tricky early expansion because we are, of course, completely surrounded by Gondor. So there's not too many places to go. And, of course, going south means we're going to be up against some pretty major factions right away. Um, yeah, without any further ado, I will jump into the game.
Alright, we have made our way into the game. Unfortunately, that music uh, that I just heard is uh, straight out of Lord of the Rings, so I'll have to remove that and add some different music. So you would have heard some music that probably didn't entirely fit with that cutscene, but um, that is the way YouTube works, unfortunately. So this is the Welcome to the Fight and Conquer message. I'm going to very quickly scan through this because I already know all these things, and if you've watched my Amladis campaign, you will know all these things as well, or if you've played the game yourself, of course. Uh, but for those of you who are new, recruitment is restricted by an event called the Barracks Event, which will trigger between turn 60 and 68. So before the Barracks Event, shit units, after the Barracks Event, good units. Characters can't die of old age, but it takes ages, 460 turns if a guy is 16 years old at the beginning of the campaign. Uh, at least, it should I should say. Um, yeah, they can live up to 120 and there are 4 turns per year. Many units get a visual change to their battle model when they're upgraded at a blacksmith. Uh, this will probably happen for some of our units as well. So the higher the blacksmith, some units will get a uh, change. Bodyguard units have a hard-coded replenishment number of 77. So if a unit starts with more than 77, then he will not replenish until his number goes below 77, and then it will only return to 77. The number uh, for unique cavalry bodyguards is different, so some of our bodyguards are going to have difference because we have many cavalry bodyguards. There are no assassins or merchants, only diplomats and spies. Many factions or regions have restricted town or castle development. We don't have any of that, uh, as the Principality of Dolmorov, we can upgrade anything and everything. The Belrock and Sauron will only have, uh, will have both have more than one soldier in their battalion because the game can't create one-man battalions. Very few factions can build boats. We are not one of those. We can build boats. Uh, elven units have slower replenishment times. Doesn't matter. We're not elves. The Palantiri are no longer used. They are now just unique buildings that give bonuses that vary from faction to faction. That might come in for us, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure which towns exactly have Palantir. I know Isengard does, but besides that. There are no repercussions for cheating. Go wild, mother load. Um, this is a message about our particular faction. Once again, I will bother reading this myself off camera, but feel free to read this. If you want to pause the video, feel free to read this yourself. Uh, I'm not going to read through it right now because it'll take about half an hour. And the military report is basically a message saying, yo, we weren't expecting war. Our units right now are shit, but ho ho hold your tits until we get to the barracks event, is what it's trying to say. Now, I wanted to say one more thing, which is, well, there's many more things to say, but one for, more thing that I want you guys to know is that, um, similar to the Imladis campaign, there's a good chance I will be recording this in bulk. Meaning that um, I probably will start uploading this rather soon compared to the Imladis campaign where I didn't upload it for a long time. Um, this campaign I will start uploading rather soon, but I will probably still record far more than I will upload. Meaning that, for example, by the time you see episode 5, I may have up re recorded up to episode 20, just as an example. So if you say, oh, you mispronounced this, or you should do this, or whatever in the comments, then there's a good chance I won't be able to do that until far later in the campaign, which at that point it might be irrelevant or it might not be, but just so you guys know, there is going to be a... there's likely going to be a large gap between what you see and what I'm up to already. I wanted to mention that now, because I will probably have to mention it many more times, but at least now it's at the beginning of the first episode, so maybe many of you will realize it right away. So, anyway, we start off with Freetown, Stolomroff itself. We start with Mefrast and Lin here. Um, and we start with quite a few units scattered across as well. We also start with a couple of boats, which cost quite a bit of money, by the way. But it's definitely worth keeping those because um, there's a script for um, our faction, the Principality of Dolmroth, which uh, basically has Umbar spawn stacks every so often. And apparently, it's quite often. And it's pretty dangerous, especially early on in the game. They spawn a stack at, at any of our towns or any of other coastal villages around here, I believe. Um, and it will just start besieging you right away. So you may have your all your forces away, like they're fighting over here or whatever, and all of a sudden a, a stack just spawns. You get rid of that, and then a new one will spawn so many turns later. I'm not sure how many, but at some point more will spawn. And then you just... It's, it's pretty dangerous, basically. So, in order to stop that, apparently, we have to destroy Umbar. I've also heard that you have to destroy the entire faction of Umbar, but what the lead mod said is... The lead mod? The mod lead. The de the lead developer of the mod, anyway. He said that you have to just uh, take Umbar. Even if you lose it after that, it will never happen again. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's important to do, which is why those ships are actually important, because we're going to have to send a navy down there at some point, because going through land is probably going to take too long. Alright, um, so that is all that. I guess we should have a look at our towns. So, unit-wise, we start with... Uh, this is our faction leader. I uh, can't look at his unit right now, because he's inside of a town. I'm not sure if he has the same one as him. Probably not. No, this guy is Nimrodel Rangers, which is a ranger unit. Uh, which is pretty good. 220 meter range, very high accuracy, 32 missiles, 6 missile attack. Pretty decent unit. Not a particularly good general, actually, but that's okay. Uh, we start with a couple of units of Amrovian... Am Amrofian? Principality of Dol Amroth, so it's Amrofian pikemen. Uh, pikemen are just generally very good, so that's a nice unit to have. Like, I'll have a look at this guy when we move him out. We um, have a unit of Archer Militia, 3 missile attack. These guys aren't as good, but they're still... Not terrible. They're pretty terrible, but you know, just gonna talk them up a little bit. This guy has the same bodyguard as him. Uh, good old Sawyer from Lost. <laughs> That's probably what I'm gonna call him. He's not Istion. This this is Sawyer right here. Sawyer has a Royal Swan Guard, which are apparently incredibly insane. They're skilled against mounts, against mounts even, which is pretty good. Uh, a good attack, an insane charge, insane defense bone or uh, total defense, and uh, good secondary attack as well. So generally, very good unit. He's also a Dunedain, apparently. And then we have... Oh, he also has a unit... Or two units of Gondor Cavalry Militia. Which are not uh, particularly amazing. But they're not terrible. Surprisingly, they appear to be wielding a spear. But aren't don't have any bonus for his cavalry. And lastly, we have Amandir. Who's also got the same general, I believe. And he's got a unit of Gondor Militia with him. Which is not a terrible unit at all. Just a good old... Good old militia unit in the beginning of the game. Now I happen to know for a fact that there's an ambush right here, like underneath Lin, the name Lin here basically, right at this spot I believe. So we're not going to move out of here for a while. Uh, I know this because I just I played a tiny bit um, just to try stuff out and um, yeah, there was an ambush there so I'm not going to fall for that again. There's a whole bunch of them around these regions anyway, I'm not sure where all of them are but... Anyway, so let's start with buildings. I... I've never really, well, well I mean, I played with Imladris the first time, and I've never really played too much, so I'm not entirely sure what uh, I want to do, because there's many, many options when it comes to buildings, but I'm assuming these high roads, or great roads, are pretty good. They cost a lot of money, but an extra 400 a turn income, that's pretty insane. 10 turns to build, though, perhaps not the best to do right away. A ladder tanner is not terrible. Military Academy gives experience, not too bothered about that right now. Of course, the Ballista Maker, Ballista Towers, Wall Defenses. Uh, mines are always good, they take four turns. It's not a terrible building, that might be the first we do. The Governor's Quarters, these things are going to be changed a lot as well. They allow us to recruit Royal Swan Guard, but... Uh, do we already have that unit available? Royal Swan Guard, we do, yeah. Just takes 35 turns for the first one, it becomes available. That's a general, basically. Um, the Fiefdom Barracks. This allows us to recruit a whole bunch of units. Uh, which are... Basically, I think these are like super rare. Like, units you just recruit once and then won't be able to recruit for a long time again. But they, they all of them look quite decent, actually. Definitely worth getting this at some point in the not-too-distant future, perhaps. And then we have a four town guardhouse, which apparently you can build in any place that has a fort in it, uh, like in the province. So this gives us a couple more units as well, which aren't particularly amazing. Um, but it's just more to bolster the troops and it's be a nice throwaway unit, I guess. Anyway, um, I think probably the mines would be a good call to get that first. There's communal farming, of course, as well. We'll probably get that. Was that Coastal Wardens? Ah, this allows us to recruit the Coastal Wardens. We already have them available. These guys, seven turns till they become available again. Right, Mathrast. We have very similar options here. We have mines available here too. Probably another good call. We can't actually recruit these archers here, so we don't get free upkeep for them. Let's get the mines. Do we have yet a practice range? That would actually give us archer militia and Nimrodel archers. This is archer militia. Yes, it is. Okay, we'll be worth building that at some point. And then Lin here. Once again, many an option available, including a port, which might be worth doing. That's not too big an increase right now. Uh, no mines available. 
A meeting hall allows us more free upkeep. We haven't even got like the town guard building. That's probably a good call to make that first here. So we can actually recruit units here too. Speaking of, um, let us start recruiting some units. We can actually build a spy here. Oh, actually, that's a spy. Okay, I thought it was a diplomat. That guy looks very diplomatic for a spy, does he not? Look at him, he's like, he's, it looks like he's got a scroll in his hand. You know, how's that a spy? Our spy will come from here, or our diplomat will come from here. Okay, that guy does... I don't know, he looks like an envoy or something. He doesn't look like a spy, or a diplomat. Um, probably want to recruit him, but let's see what else we can do. We um, we have quite a bit of money. Well, not anymore, but we had quite a bit of money. And we we do make quite a bit of money. The Walmart is a pretty rich faction, apparently. I think uh, the Coastal Warren and they're a... Uh, a javelin troop, and they're pretty decent as well. Seven assault attack, 178 of them as well, which is pretty good. We get Dolonroth squires, which I believe are quite rare. They can only be recruited in the homeland regions. These guys are just, yeah, they're fine. They're everywhere. Uh, the squires are definitely better. How long do they take to replenish? 12 turns. It's not even too bad. Um, I'm not sure. We have so many options for recruitment. We can only do one thing right now, so I probably should recruit a unit. Let's get this guy out, the Wardens. Um, over yonder, we can recruit three units, my god. And Ruffian Guardsmen, and Ruffian Pikemen, and then Gondor Militia. They take 10 turns, 13, 13. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get... This one can have more than just the one, so I'm actually gonna recruit these guys instead. Attempted to recruit cavalry as well. This one can have more than one as well. So maybe I should recruit these guys because their pool is full. This one isn't... The pool isn't full. We can have more than just a single one. So yeah, let's do that. And in fact, I'm going to do that here as well then. To make sure this pool doesn't get filled up right away. Uh, and then back in Dolom Roth. There's a, a couple more choices here. My god. We have a lot of... We definitely have a lot of options here. O options... Um, the Nimrodil Rangers, how long do you... 34 turns, so I'm not too bothered about getting them right away. I'm assuming these guys... Oh wow, these guys actually don't have a limit of one. We can actually have more of these, so they're already replenishing. That's quite good, so I don't have any rush to get these guys out as soon as possible. Unipool of these guys is maxed out. They're maxed out, and then... That one's maxed out. So I think that's probably a good start for units. Maybe... Yeah, they are too. I guess I could recruit them, but the problem is upkeep is going to be crazy. We don't want to go too much overboard. Let's get that one out as well, though, just so it starts replenishing the next uh, unit as well. So we spent a lot of money. I'm not sure how good we're going to be on money for a while. Uh, what's the upkeep for these generals? I bet it's quite high. 275, that's not too bad. Okay. So we want to start moving this way ASAP. We also want to take uh, Ephalon as soon as possible. So we're going to probably do that immediately. Uh, I'm probably just going to siege them out. Unless I can get some archers over there or something. We currently don't have any archers except for this dude who has an archer in him of himself. Um, but yeah, I think we're just going to besiege right away. Quell this evil! And just start building shit. Seven turns though, that's quite a while, so maybe I should just actually besiege them. Eight turns. Ah, that's because we don't have any units in here yet. Alright, so let's move them over. We're gonna get a whole bunch of units. Let's see what it's like now. Two turns to build all that. How long does it take to build ladders? Probably quite. Or uh, towers. Yeah. Let's just do ladders. Um. We're recruiting quite a few units. We could send two more over. I'm not sure they can reach right away, but we'll, we'll besiege him for a little bit. That's okay. This guy isn't currently getting any um, free upkeep, so I'm going to put him into the fort right now. Here we can recruit the militia, and I'm assuming we get some units of free upkeep, so let's have a look. Uh, no, we don't. I could build the meeting hall, which gives us... One free upkeep unit. Eh, it's not too bothered. I'm not too bothered about that then. I could right now move into that ambush and just kill them right away. It doesn't mean we start paying for these dudes immediately as well. This guy's getting free upkeep, so I'm tempted to leave him in here, especially because I already have two generals over here. We probably don't need a third. So I'd probably keep him in, in here. He's a very respected general. That's a point, of course. I need to actually possibly keep generals inside towns for um, extra money. 
How good are you? Four. And you're two respect. Okay. So this looks fine from to me right now. All right. So I don't think I'm gonna move out just yet. Let's just keep the free upkeep for these dudes for the moment. We'll send them out maybe next turn or something. Once we've got a couple more units recruited here, and we got only got one currently coming, of course, now. Um, I don't know what the ambush is, but it's probably a bunch of anti calf so we probably don't want to run in there right now anyway. Okay, I think um, that may be the longest turn anyone's ever take, or longest time anyone's ever taken for a turn, but I think it's done, so. I could move the navy around for exploration purposes, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, let's send them up the coast a little bit. See, there's a Gondorian large town. I'm not sure where everything is, but I do want to get them back at some point, because obviously we want to actually use them. I haven't even looked at diplomacy yet. We are allied to Gondor and Rohan. We have trade rights and military access as well. We are enemies, like I said, with Rune. We are enemies with Mordor as well, uh, the Harajim tribes and Umbar. So we're basically at war of everyone around here except for Khand. And of course the bandits and rebels, but that is not too crazy. They're war with the same exact group of people, except they are more with Khan instead of Rune. Okay. Sounds fantastic. We, yeah, there's, there's a fort here, so I was like, oh, let's put the units in the fort, but yeah, you can't. Well, you can, but you'd have to kill people on the way, and that's not really something I want to do right now. So let's end that turn. A long first turn. I have forgotten to mention, but I'm sure... Actually, no. I'll just mention it anyway. I was going to say most of you understand, but you probably wouldn't, unless you've watched the Imlages campaign. The music you were hearing is... Uh, all made by Adrian von Ziegler, a YouTuber who makes music. Uh, link to his channel will be in the description. It's basically because all the music in this game is copyright claimed and stuff, so I don't want to run into any trouble. So I use that man's beautiful music like I did with the other campaign as well. We are still making a pretty penny because I think we mostly ran out of money. So that's good. Can run these two units in there as well. We couldn't get any free upkeep for them, so I'm like half tempted not to, but uh, if we are going to actually fight it, then having a couple extra units in there probably would be a good idea. Then again, how many units do we really need to take this? It's three units of bandits. Bandits are our melee units. Pretty poor ones at that. <clears throat> so we could probably just. Oh, I haven't even looked at this unit yet. We could probably just use his unit, the Talon Knights. This is one of those units, and this one as well, actually. Both these generals, they will actually lose men and only replenish up to 77 if they go below what they are currently. So they won't replenish until they get below 77. <clears throat> so it is actually worth not necessarily putting them in, in any risk, or at any risk of losing them. We have no archers except for that unit. I think we already have plenty of units here. We probably should consider sending more shit east, because we do need to attack down here ASAP, I think. Uh, speaking of, I want to send the entire crew over here that way as well. Istion... You're a pretty poor general, but so is this guy. He's worse as a general, so yeah. Istion or Sawyer, I think you're going to be leading this force. I also should have been putting down... Um... Man, I'm so terrible at this game. Watchtowers and shit. Uh... Alright, that covers most of that already, so that's pretty good. We can come back. Can I just take, like, one dude out of here? I think I can, can't I? Can yeah okay. Onward. Let's place a uh, watchtower there. No. Forward. Right. Let's get back inside. Because I might actually fight this now. I'm not sure. How many uh, things have I built so far? Okay. We need we need a little bit more. We're gonna be able to get all those ladders done though, which is already enough, I guess. So yeah, let's just um, maintain the siege and attack it next turn. What was the other shit we did? Units. We recruited them. Good stuff. Uh, Alright, end of turn reports. We went down financially. Wow, we're really high on population apparently. It's pretty good. Protect the blood of Numenor. Okay, you can actually come up here. There's no ambush here as far as I'm aware. Hope not anyway. Um, It's gonna be a, a little bit before those other guys can arrive anyway, so why don't we... I think I'll start running the archer up for now. As you wish. We'll um, Protect the I'll have blood this of guy Numenor. plop down some towers as well. Watch for the enemy. Awaiting your command. If I place one here, that should be good enough. Let's get a look on that town as well. Onward, Captain of Gondor. 
place one here just in case it doesn't cover all of it, but all right. So you're coming this way, and then the cav are going to stay in there for the moment. They can reach that. There's two dudes next turn anyway, so that's fine. And then again... Uh, no, I'll move over now. It's fine. Okay. I can actually move him out a little bit and also place a tower around here. Just about enough. That didn't give me any more info. Did I place one? Yeah, I did. Not sure if I've got all this cover, but it's good enough. No one's ever going to walk around here, right? <laughs> right? 20 turns later. Right, these dudes. I think we're gonna... I mean, if anything, we're gonna add you into this... Uh, this fort there. As you wish. Or not. Okay. Uh, right, that was, that was one of the ambushes I wasn't aware of. Okay, so we got some pretty mediocre... Or two fort spearmen and two bandits against our two units of... Well, Amrovian, Gar Amrovian guardsmen and Amrovian pikemen. Um, they are attacking us, so we should be okay. I mean, the Pike unit is incredibly good in this, well, not necessarily in this situation, but just in general. You know, let's fight it. I was going to leave this for next episode, but let's make the first episode slightly longer, just so we can get a battle in there. It's definitely winnable. I wasn't really quite expecting um, to get ambushed right away, but hey, what are you going to do? So we are being ambushed, so yeah, we don't really get a chance to set up at all, do we? Okay. Uh, so let's set you up over here. These guys over there. Let's run you into position, please. They have no ranged units. Which is good. My experience so far with pikes is kind of um, poor with the Imladris guards, or whatever the hell they're called. In the Imladris campaign, they to bug out a little bit too much but they're also half the number of the of these guys so I'm, I'm hoping that because these guys have a larger number you know we should just take the hill, hill advantage actually i'm hoping because of the number numerical advantage or just the, the far higher number this unit has they won't be as buggy or whatever but anyway what a great ambush by the way set up like incredibly far away how do we not see them by the way well, look at this it's cool in the open. There's no forest. I mean, a tiny bit of forest there, but they didn't come from there. How, how, how do we get ambushed, people? This is a damn shame. Alright, we're gonna use these guys when necessary. Alright, so get into formation, please. See, what the um, Imladris dudes kept doing is they you tell them to go into formation, and instead of going into formation, they start moving around really weirdly. See, they're not putting their... Sp there are pikes down. I'm not entirely sure why. This guy looks a bit bugged. I hope that's not it. Let's move him over slightly to the right. Maybe that'll fix it. They're also they're attacking me, right? So they'll they'll lose if they don't do anything. There you go. No, they're, no, they're not. I think they just put him down when the enemy gets close or something. That guy's still bugging out, though. To be fair, <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> it's an ambush. So they're attacking me, are they not? I mean, I'll I guess I'll walk up to them, but. I'm not entirely sure why they're not just attacking me. Because as far as I'm, I'm aware, they're the ones attacking me. So they'll lose after however many minutes it is. Oh, here we go. We triggered them to come towards us, I think. Well, just get into formation ASAP. I also, I'm not going to put a guard mode on purposely. Because that seems to help with the bugging out a lot. I like to adjust the line a little bit that way, actually. Hopefully that's not too late. Yes, keep those spears down. That's what... No, don't put them up. Put him down. Da -da 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 -da. See, I don't get that. Why didn't they put him down? Anyway. Hopefully it's uh, going to be good enough. Because now we're in this really weird formation, but we're losing men quite rapidly already, unfortunately. I just don't quite understand this, the, how, the way, how pike units work yet. They didn't put their spears down before the enemy reached them. That's exactly what you'd want, right? Is you want to put your spears down before the enemy reaches you. I could try and sneak through here and just attack him in the back, but I'm not entirely sure what their response would be if I were to do that. So I'm going to assume that my pikes will be able to beat this unit. Which currently looks like they will. I think once they've killed that first line of men, the, the, the rest of them will be at a further distance away from them. And if, 
if they're not really s slashing at my men in melee, then they should be pretty good, I'd imagine. I'm tempted to charge them, because I'm pretty sure my units are far better. They are better. I'm not going to say far, but... I just don't want to be flanked. Like, I'm thinking about flanking them, but... Oh, here we go, never mind. Looks like they're making the decision for me. I'm going to let them charge into this unit, because they might, once again, walk into those spears. Could also put them in shield wall, of course, but... See, this is what you want. You want them to be stuck right there. I mean, some of them still manage to get through, but... Out of further away. Okay, we're going to start flanking the, this unit here. Even if it means we then get outflanked ourselves, that's okay. Oh, unless this unit has other ideas, which apparently it does. It's going to be a counter charge, I guess. Hopefully I did that with plenty of time. Right. Well, there goes all of our strategy. We just got to hope we win now. If they had flanked us, they definitely have a pretty decent advantage, but currently not using that Fort Spearman unit to their best capability. Oh, here it comes, though. This is a fight we should definitely win. These guys are definitely far better than they are. I think we just gotta chug it out. But we should win this. They just have such a numerical advantage that we can't really do anything tactically. We can't flank or anything like that. I also am not sure, maybe I should have put them in a shield wall, but... I don't know, my experience with abilities in this game... Like, formation abilities, just... Oh, that's not good. That's somewhat unfortunate. Steady. Yeah, don't don't run away now. Well, it's only a captain, so it's not um, terrible, but... Having these guys rode, that would be terrible. Definitely winning the original fight. Initial fight. Victory seems certain. Defeat seems certain. Keeps changing a little bit, though, but still. That one is definitely dying. Okay, so if we, if we manage to f make this one rout and we can flank them... Looks like they're gonna come in, though. These bandits are worse, I believe, than the Fort Spearmen. Steady. But they are very tired. Murder them, please. Make them rout. They're wavering. Come on. If they run, and we may be able to just break these two units before they... Especially since they appear to be running away for whatever reason. 17. Come on, just go away. No one likes you. Save your own lives. Save your skin. Our they somehow are, are recovering. Only half the enemy force remains. <laughs> Our army is tiring. Only half the enemy force remains. Those are two different things, but hey, I'll take it. Well, unfortunately, those five men are so fucking steady that they managed to stay in this fight. Um, and uh, one guy remaining now. It stopped me from being able to flank here. Wavering. Oh god, that's not good. Don't... Only a fool could lose this battle, you know it! Alright, don't chase them. Just, we gotta help out here. We gotta, we gotta make sure these guys are out. Even if we get flanked then, these guys can, can, can sustain a flank, I think. We're gonna have to let them flank us. In favor of having a flank on these guys and perhaps breaking them first. We're wavering as well, oh shit, I didn't realize that was so bad, but... Eh. It's just getting closer than I thought. Like, we, we we have this easily if my men don't break. We just have far superior units. It's pretty clear now. But unfortunately, they don't want to break either. We're shaking again. Shaking, that's better than wavering. They're wavering still. Come on. Okay, get out of there. Give them another charge from over here now. Oh, they're broke. Okay, there we go. Yeah, 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 we got them now. Okay. Let's retreat then. Let these guys walk into the pikes. See, now they're putting the spears down. Are they gonna come over or no? Alright, fine, kill them first. Shouldn't last very long. Right. What if I put them on guard mode? Will you put your spears down then? No, it doesn't change anything. It just means they're gonna stay in the same location, but. Alright, don't don't chase. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Let's just get back and sit there. And let our men recover from their incredible... Incredibly tiredness. Can you stop? Where, why are you still over there? <laughs> Come back. Come to the line. Actually, I want to kind of... Oh, that's good. 
I want to get um, them to charge in here. So I'm going to run all the way back. Walk back. I wanted to go into the pikes. There you go, the pikes are down. See, that's what you want. Now, why don't they do that normally? All right, get a flank. Oh, there we go. I'm sure if we killed 85%, probably not. See, the thing is, I'm not sure because they're rebels if they'll survive or not. Come on, gotta catch him. <laughs> How close is that? Um, I don't think we're gonna be able to get to 85%, unfortunately. We're literally just the exact same speed as them or something. Ugh. Yeah, alright. Well, I guess we'll find out. By the victory we have won here today. You had a couple units on the pikemen. The pikemen actually lost uh, far fewer men than the guardsmen did in the end. Guardsmen did really well, though. I mean, they both did really well. Pikemen killed more men. So technically, pikemen did better, but... I'm, I'm just not... I'm still not entirely sure how the pikes work, because... Why did they put their pikes down... Um... Just then, like before that last unit charged in, why didn't they put him down the other time? I'm just not entirely sure why that happens the way it happens. Because that's really rough. Like, when you want your pikes to have their pikes. That's the whole point of having pikes is so that they can keep a unit at a distance and keep poking away. And pikes are incredibly OP in this mod, apparently. So that's why their stats are so low. Because they're so OP in, in melee. But only when their pikes are down, not when you literally just run, run into them. Okay, they did die. That's good. It is our day, apparently. Right, well, I do want to retrain these units. I guess I'll just send them back. I don't know if I can retrain them right away. Oh, probably not. And no more units available, but we'll, um, we'll give them some time. At least they're giving me free upkeeping in that case. Right, well, I'm going to end the episode here. We, um, we're going to do some more of this turn next time. We have some retraining and, and such to do. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time we're going to do that. Until then, have a good day and goodbye.